Hi, I'm Liz Mahan, and I'm a rising fifth-year psychology PhD at Brandeis University. The aim of my work is to find methods to prevent Alzheimer's so that no one has to experience it again. I know what you're thinking. Liz, can't doctors tell when symptoms start so that they know who to help? Unfortunately, significant cognitive deficits already begin to affect daily living and only worsen by the time noticeable symptoms appear. If we knew who would get Alzheimer's, we could take preventative measures earlier, such as modifying known risk factors or giving medication earlier for increased effectiveness. Alzheimer's brain changes begin over 20 years before memory loss, but I believe that one of these changes could be the key to stopping the disease. Have you noticed that as you get older, your voice changes? This is because the same area of the brain that controls your voice also controls your cognitive functioning, so both naturally decline as you age. Having Alzheimer's is already linked to having certain voice features, like higher pitch, higher jitter, and lower volume. Since my research focuses on Alzheimer's prevention, I utilize voice analysis software to analyze speech in order to see if voice measures can be used as diagnostic tools for early detection. Participating in the three-minute thesis competition gave me the chance to share my work to a bigger audience outside of the psychology department. When I first heard about it, I thought, what's the worst that could happen? I could improvise if I forgot my lines on stage and pat myself on the back for having the courage to try something new. So that night, as I sat at my desk and wrote, I imagined discussing my research with my grandma, who has no experience in my field. Writing the speech is similar to writing a college essay. It has to encapsulate your work while still capturing the audience with an interesting story. When I looked down at my paper at midnight, my story was complete. I titled it, Armed Against Alzheimer's, How Your Voice Could Save Your Mind. The first round was split into two days. I went on the first day, so on the second day, I sat in the back and observed the other contestants. It was fascinating to hear about the amazing research conducted by students across the university. But since I was the only person to think of attending the other day, nobody knew who I was. So I felt like a spy. I felt even more like a secret agent as I took notes in my journal about each speaker's skills. Great hand gestures, I wrote about someone. Strong eye contact, I wrote about the person who ended up winning third prize. My biggest competitor, I wrote in all capitals about someone who today is actually my friend. After winning the first round, I practiced my talk a lot. I frequently recorded myself in order to see how I could improve. It was really helpful to get edits from my professor and practice in front of lab mates, friends, and family. I spent hours practicing all over campus with my undergraduate research assistants, including in classrooms, in the dining hall, and even outside on picnic tables to simulate the stage. By rehearsing this way and dealing with things like random people walking by and cars honking, I was more prepared for unexpected distractions during my talk. The big day finally arrived. I saw a sea of faces as I walked on stage, but I wasn't scared because they were the faces of my friends, professors, classmates, and students. It was time to tell my story. So I took a deep breath and told myself that this was just for fun. I discussed my paper, Voice Biomarkers as Indicators of Cognitive Changes in Middle and Later Adulthood, which was published in 2022. The results indicated that specific voice measures from 10 years later could predict an increased risk of Alzheimer's disease. I added that I'm exploring whether changes in our voice over time could point to a higher chance of developing Alzheimer's disease later in life. Voice measures are less invasive and more affordable than current methods like brain scans and blood draws. Also, doctors could measure your voice easily and passively during your yearly physicals. And finally, I said that I'm investigating if variations in our voices throughout the day could be used as markers. These voice measures could be tracked over time, like on a smartphone app. This approach would also allow for medical intervention the day that a person is marked at risk. And even though only a few of us won prizes, we contestants continue to stay in touch via social media, chats, and dinners. 
With or without winning, it was a meaningful experience to make friends throughout the entire time. Each contestant has such a distinct area of research, and I've already learned so much from their talks, and now that we're friends, I'm learning even more. It's made me realize that although the speakers we see on stage may all have engaging topics, their unique backgrounds are what really make them the speakers that they are today. After winning the Brandeis competition, I competed in Northeastern regionals, which included schools from Northeastern states and Canada. Since the regionals competition was on Zoom, I had to practice my hand gestures and facial expressions. My research assistant was so eager to help me that he brought an LED light and a photo umbrella so I would have great lighting. Luckily, I was third in line, so I didn't have to worry about my talk and I could just sit back, relax, and enjoy listening to the others. But I was actually glad that he was there with me because I was nervous the entire time. When they had finally announced that I won, I jumped a foot off my chair in glee. The messages started pouring in. Classmates, friends, and family from around the world had tuned in to watch me and congratulate me. But my joy wasn't just from winning. It was from seeing how many people were standing by my side. And this even included the Brandeis contestants. We made it, I told my professor over the phone, because this victory is not just from my words, but especially from our important research. It was our lab's ongoing support of my hard work that allowed me to shine on this day. Because I won the Northeast Regionals competition, I'll be competing in the Nationals competition in Washington, D.C. in December. This whole experience has been like a dream. It's been a great honor sharing my research and journey with the world, including with everyone who's helped me succeed in every step of the way. Thank you to everyone who's helped me get here. Words can't express how much your support means to me. I'm thankful to work with enthusiastic people in my lab who bring fresh perspectives every day. My team is finding ways of preventing Alzheimer's one step at a time. I'm excited to see all of the incredible things that we'll achieve in the many years to come. Our contributions are important to the advancement of Alzheimer's prevention research. But it is equally essential to find ways to spread the message of our work in order to spark innovative ideas and collaboration around the world. Through this experience, I've also realized that I enjoy connecting with an audience about a critical global issue that may even have personal significance to them so that ultimately they might be inspired to help the cause in many different ways. Thank you.